Welcome back. I'm Annie, and this is Tea and Table, my little board game design diary podcast, in which I talk about my board game design journey. So I've repeatedly received some very unexpected feedback, which is that there is not enough tea content. So I'm very happy to talk more about tea because tea is very nice, right? So here's something interesting about tea. Black tea and green tea are actually made from exactly the same plants, and the only difference is in their processing. In order to make black tea, the plucked leaves are first left to wither and dry out, which is not done for green tea, where the leaves are instead steamed to prevent oxidization. And oxidization, in turn, is the most important step for black tea, which is when it turns, well, black, and develops its flavor. Finally, both teas are then dried and sorted, and then they're ready for you to enjoy them, for example, as you listen to this podcast. And now that we went down this little rabbit hole about how tea is made, I feel like there is a massive elephant in the room. This sounds like a board game, right? Maybe a Euro game about optimizing your production like you do for wine in viticulture. And of course, these games exist. There is, for example, Formosa Tea from 2019, Sulon from 2018, or Darjeeling from 2007, all of which are about tea production. Outside of this, there are a bunch of less strategy-focused and more cozy-feeling games, like, for example, matcha, in which you try to perform a tea ceremony. I unfortunately haven't played any of these games, but would really enjoy trying them, of course. Especially for Musa, tea sounds interesting and has adorable cover art. And with that, to the other topic of the episode. This is the second part of me doing some market research quote-unquote, on hacking games. In episode 5, I looked at Android Netrunner, by far the most prominent hacking game in existence, and this time I'll look at a few other ones. Let's start out with The Breach. This game is not yet released, but it funded very successfully on Kickstarter. And who would have expected it? It has minis, and lots of them. Again, similar to Netrunner, it's set in a futuristic cyberpunk world, and it also looks like a fairly complex game, at least much more complex than what I'm aiming for with my game. Second, I found Renegade, which is a game from 2018 that I actually didn't find at first when I was looking for other hacking games a few months back. But it's actually by far the most interesting to me since it's closest to my own idea. It's also a cooperative deck-building game, and it also features tiles in the middle of the table to represent the network. Again, it's set in a cyberpunk universe and looks pretty complex to me, with a complexity rating of 3.7 on Board Game Geek. And finally, Hack Trick is a very lightweight deduction card game that doesn't focus at all on the network aspect as my game does. So overall, I think there aren't that many games about hacking in the first place, and the game I'm making luckily doesn't already exist. However, it might still be interesting to look into a setting for my game that is different from the very prevalent science fiction-y cyberpunk setting in most other games. I've thought about making it about real hacking stories before, you know, that have happened in real life, and it seems like that would indeed set it apart. But of course that would be scenario-based and increase the scope significantly, which may not be ideal as a first game to work on. I'll keep thinking about this, and with that, I hope you have a great day, and thank you for listening.